Lightspeed Lego Review number 41, set 75165. This walker slash mech build is kinda odd, like some days I like it and others I don't. It almost doesn't feel like a Star Wars vehicle, if that makes sense. I don't know, like, I don't think it's bad, just a bit weird. The guns can be angled up and down and have stud shooters on them, there's a clip at the back for the driver's blaster, and it has decently posable legs. For figures, we have two Rogue One Stormies, and as you know if you've been here before, these are my favorite regular Stormtrooper minifigures. Just perfection. We also got two Death Troopers, my favorite Stormtrooper variants overall, only beaten by the specialists from Koenig Shuttle. We're also still in the era of stud shooters, not a big fan of them personally, but they are great for play. Overall, it's a great battle pack. Even if the build is a bit weird, these two pairs of figures are just magnificent. This is an amazing armor builder. And at $15 retail, we're finally starting to see the slow price increase in the battle packs, but I still think it was a fair deal. 9 out of 10. Let me know thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Lightspeed Lego Review number 42, set 75134. This build is pretty bad. I mean, it's not the worst, but I don't care for it. The set's counterpart is much better in the build department. Here, we do have a couple nice printed tiles, though. There are two spaces for figures, one standing, one sitting, as well as clips for their blasters. The turret on it can also rotate fully around, and has a spring Loaded shooter. For figures, we have two jump troopers or battle damage stormtroopers, and these guys are great. Love the little added flavor with the scuff and blaster marks on them. And those huge jetpacks with the exclusive printed tiles are cool too. Next, we have an Imperial Shock Trooper, and if you know me, you know I love Shock Troopers. This guy's probably my favorite basic stormtrooper fig, period. I just adore that red color scheme. Lastly, an Imperial Crew, not a flashy fig, but still a really good fig. Finally, we're still messing with stud shooters, still don't like him, but I can appreciate the play value. Overall, it's another really strong battle pack. Even with the build being what it is, the minifig selection, once again, is absolutely amazing. No complaints here. And at $30, good deal. 8 out of 10. Let me know in the thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Let's read Lego Review number 43, set 75267. Build number one is a pile of rocks. You can place a blaster on it, you can put a figure on it, there's a clip for another blaster. It's fine for for what it is, which is a pile of rocks. Build number two, the Belta Speeder on the other hand, is pretty decent. It's a bit chunky, sure, but it still looks pretty good. It has a spot for a pilot and a couple of stud shooters. For figures, we have four different Mandalorians, two male and two female. They all look great, my personal favorite being the Azure one. I think it's a dash of purple that really does it for me. Finally, still using stud shooters, stinky to me, but good for play. Overall, it's a decent battle pack. The builds are mixed, but the figs are great, though not that massable. Sure, you can mix and match as much as you like, but they easily look their best as intended. Lastly, at 15 bucks, it was a fine deal. 7 out of 10. Let me know thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Lightspeed Lego Review number 44, set 75373. The build here is a wall from the Caves of Mandalore. Cool. I mean, I don't have a problem with it, it's a perfectly fine piece of terrain to display the figures on. There's an arm on it that can be used to simulate one of the figures mid-flight, a nice crate with a thermal detonator, and at the back of it a clip for an extra rifle. There's also a clip and a bar at each end of it, which can be used to attach it to 75386. Included is also a little turret. Pew! For figures, we have two Imperial Armored Commandos, and I love this minifig. The new Helen World is so good. These guys are basically perfect. Next, an Amex Mando Warrior, also just a fantastic fig. And so is the final figure, the Mandalorian Night Owl. Overall, it's a great battle pack, even with its relatively boring build, but you're buying this for the figures, and LEGO really nailed them here, and they're massable too. At 20 bucks, though, for what's essentially four figures and some extra pieces, it's not horrible, but it's not great either. You will never convince me that a figure is worth $5 at retail. Just no. Still, 8 out of 10. Let me know thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Lightspeed Lego Review number 45, set 75386. Oh look, the build's another wall from the Caves of Mandalore. This one has a fancy door on it though. All jokes aside, I do like this build, it's a fine enough background for the figures. The door automatically locks into place when lifted open and can be closed by pushing on this lever. Up top, the turret, my least favorite part of the build, can be rotated around and has a couple of stud shooters. Below it is a small space with a nice screen depicting Gideon's cruiser. Also included is a crate with a thermal detonator. Each end also has a bar and a clip to attach 75373. For figures, we have two Imperial Praetorian Guards. Very good depictions of these guys, and I do like the design, but god is it also derivative. Next, Paz Vizsla, a gorgeous minifig with a nice built up blaster. Nothing to complain about here. Finally, Moff Gideon himself. All he's really missing is his cape, and then he'd be perfect. Overall, it's a fine set. I do like the build, but it doesn't have much going for it in terms of play value, which I don't care about, but the target audience sure will. The figures are mostly fantastic, though. Finally, at $40, come on, this is a $30 set if I've ever seen one. 7 out of 10. Let me know thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Let's read Lego Review number 46, set 75387. I really like this build, a slight gripe I have with the design being these two stickers repeated four times, which 
could have easily been prints since the repetition, but it's not that big a deal. The entrance door, which is nicely printed, can be switched between closed and cut open with this lever, and it's really satisfying. These four knobs also allow you to knock down the figures as if they're being shot, which is an unnecessary but cute play feature. For figures, we have two stormtroopers, and though the new design isn't my favorite, I have no real issues with them either. I think they're perfectly fine. We've also got two rebel fleet troopers. I wish there was some difference between their faces, but other than that, they're great. Captain Antilles also gets his first smaller set appearance, and he's also really good. Lastly, for the main lineup, Vader. We've seen this guy many times before, and he's still great. And then for the anniversary guy, Fives. His helmet's embarrassing and the camera is lackluster. The rest of him is great. Only hot takes on this channel. Overall, it's a good set. The build is really clean on the display side, and the figures are all really good, with one exception. Finally, 55 bucks is a lot. 7 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Let's read Lego review number 47, set 75136. I love this escape pod build. I think it's really good. Though, a lot of the design comes from these large stickers, which are always a pain to apply. Inside, there's plenty of space for 3PO and R2, more large stickers with a screen for the plot's trajectory, and the iconic shot of the ISD through the porthole. Finally, we have the plans for the Death Star on this 2x2 tile. At least, I think that's what they're meant to be, even though it doesn't really make any sense. It's still a cool piece. For figures, we have two Jawas, and I like them. They're Jawas. Perhaps they should have had capes, but I I'm fine with or without, honestly. Next up, C-3PO. This is the most common version of him, no fancy extra detail or nothing, but he's good. It's 3PO. Lastly, R2-D2, also the most common version of him, and basically the most modern version with some slight deviations and without the backprint, of course. And just like 3PO, he's good. Overall, it's a good set. The build's nice, the figs are good. It's not the fanciest thing, but it does what it aims to do, and it does it well. Finally, at $25 retail, it was an okay deal. 7 out of 10. Let me know thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Lightspeed Lego Review number 48, set 75081. This T-16 Skyhopper is pretty good. It does look a bit unfinished at the back though, with all these exposed pinholes, but other than that, it is really nice. Both of its wings have spring-loaded shooters, and can be adjusted between flight and landed mode. The interior can be accessed by opening the side panels, and inside we have space for a single pilot, as well as a storage grid. One thing I do wish you were able to do with the model is to adjust the main cannon, as it is completely locked in place here. For figures, we have a T-16 pilot. He's simple, yet good. His helmet also has the same pattern as the training helmet used by Luke in A New Hope. That's pretty neat. Included is also the first appearance of the Molded Head Tusken Raider, and this guy is amazing, and probably half the reason I bought this set in the first place. Just perfection. Also, one Pratt. Overall, it's a neat little set. The build's good, if slightly flawed, the figures are just fantastic, and at 25 bucks retail, it was actually a pretty good deal. 7 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Let's speed Lego review number 49, set 75167. This speeder here is interesting. It almost feels over-designed, if that makes sense. It's just a lot with the triple guns and the pots and such. But it's not bad, and I really like the Azure as the choice for the accent color. It has space for a single pilot and a couple of stud shooters. For figures, we have Bosk, the only figure to remain exclusive to this set, and he's fantastic. The only thing that would really improve him is dual mounted arms and legs. Next, Dengar. He's also really good, if a bit lacking in the legs. They could have given him some armor printing there. Thirdly, Forlom, everyone's favorite bug eye protocol Troy turned bounty hunter, and I have no complaints here. He's perfect. Finally, IG88, the blandest of the bunch, but he's still fine, though I never realized how ridiculously massive leg grasses and droids' heads are relative to their bodies. Like, my god. Also, still stud shooters. They are fun, though. Overall, it's a good set. The build might be a bit all over the place, but at least it's unique, and the figures are just phenomenal. But it's not a battle pack, and never should have been named as such. But it is also just a name, and I ain't gonna complain about getting four desirable figures for 15 bucks. Now that is a deal. 8 out of 10. Let me know thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more. Lightspeed Lego Review number 50, set 75164. For build number one, we've got this barricade with a turret, and it's really nice, actually. The turret can be angled up and down, swivels from side to side, and has a stud shooter. Build number two is this dark ring speed and I love this thing, especially the color scheme. It has space for a pilot and a couple of clips for equipment. For figures, we have four different rebel troopers, and all apparently based on named characters. Bet you didn't know that. I sure as hell didn't. They do still work as just unnamed armor builders too though. Starting with Private Calfor with his unique torso and that absolutely amazing dual mode helmet. Next we have Corporal Tonk using the same awesome helmet, but being the only figure to not possess anything unique to him. Private Capul, on the other hand, being the most exclusive with only his face being reused in another set. Finally, Corporal Rostock, also with an exclusive torso. And all of them being absolutely fantastic figures, though some bearing stronger resemblances to their counterparts than others. Finally, stud shooters. I still don't like them, but appreciate the play value. Overall, it's a fantastic battle pack with strong builds and albeit named, but still massable figures. And at $15, it was a good deal. 9 out of 10. Let me know thoughts below, and like and subscribe for more.